Welcome to the Tesla Economist. Please hit the thumbs up and remember to subscribe. You can also follow me on Twitter and talk to me on Patreon. We beat the bears, we beat the shorts, we beat billionaires that think they know better. We beat Michael Burry, we beat Ford and GM. We knew better than them all. We know better than them now. Why? Why are we special? How do we manage to massively outperform even Berkshire Hathaway over the last few years? The almighty Warren Buffett. Well, why would a bear know better than us? The only possible way they might have the motivation to study Tesla as much as us would be if they were all in shorting Tesla and would then be dedicated enough to follow the company. Maybe. What's more exciting, watching the most incredible company of all time save the world, or hoping that your confirmation biases of every previous new auto startup failing, that the odds are that this one must too, whilst Tesla continues to grow. Yeah, think about that for a bit. My enthusiasm for Tesla took me over just about full time a few years ago, and now I'm well beyond full time with my Tesla analysis, and I get to talk to insiders and many other credible people. Now I have established some credibility within the community. Oh yes, the Tesla investor bull community. We have all sorts of people from all sorts of backgrounds in all sorts of walks of life studying their areas of interest related to Tesla. Engineers, analysts, economists, etc. Concentrating on said studies full time, and some even making a living from it. And some make a great living from it. There are tens of thousands of us, maybe even more, all with passion for this mission, curious as to just what this company is capable of in reshaping our lives, our planet, and our future. On this channel alone, we find some wild scenarios of how much life can change through this company. While I'm on the subject, I just wanted to extend my appreciation to this community. Everyone is very respectful to one another, and the contribution that comes as a result is beautiful. I'm sure there's never been close to such a community revolved around a company ever in history. I don't even think Apple. They even give us a name if you're part of the community, a Tesla fanboy. On the other hand, if a company is going to make you a multi-millionaire, then hey, you probably are quite a big fan of it. You're probably going to take some interest in this life-changing company. You can't resist. Sure, there are cliches of buy and forget, but it's hard not to keep an eye on your money. And it's hard not to see the hyperbole actually come into fruition with these outlandish ideas that people literally laughed at. Well, Elon is now the richest man in the world and is worth more money than anyone else has ever had in history, not adjusted for inflation. Andrew Carnegie was still about three or four times Elon's wealth adjusted for inflation. With continual amazing advancements in every facet Tesla or Elon endeavors, we will see the same results continually. Rockets landing themselves, communication with monkeys, global ubiquitous internet, and everything else. People aren't laughing so hard anymore. In the meantime, all the other people believing these possibilities that were also laughed at, well, they're all a lot richer now. It's dangerous to underestimate Elon Musk. I believe Warren Buffett even said it's dangerous to underestimate someone who overestimates himself. And if I recall, he was referring directly to Elon Musk when he said that. So Tesla has the fantastic community with all these brilliant minds. And over the years, a lot of these members have made so much money on their Tesla shares that they can even focus on reporting on Tesla full time. Well, what did the shorts have? They don't have the passion, the curiosity, the hope that Tesla and Elon inspires. The bears and Tesla Qs are a far smaller community, and they're also not getting invited to Tesla events. The community is much smaller and doesn't have people studying it full time, at least nothing remotely close to the bulls. The writing is all over the wall now. I'm almost lost for words when I listen to what some of the bears still say, and you know the ones I'm talking about. They've been seriously hurt with their Tesla positions, financially ruined, Yet, even now, they still can't let it go. This is a lesson to me how credible people, for lack of a better word, can still believe this. All the facts are clear as day now. It's not like it was five years ago. Tesla not only succeeded with the Model 3, but the Model Y even significantly superseded the Model 3 again, and the compact Tesla will supersede that further. Oh, and robotaxis, again, to another level. Okay, so humans are capable of confirmation biases this strong, suffering from severe cognitive dissonance. Seriously, some pairs really can't let it go, but they aren't involved in this community and shorting Tesla is likely not their only position. Tesla is my only stock position. It's the only company I need to follow. Well, what if you have five positions to manage too? This is the same for all analysts. Look how many stocks they follow. How can they have any credibility on Tesla when you compare them to any Tesla fanboy that own over a thousand shares of Tesla, for example? How can you be more excited, passionate, curious about a company's stock price dropping than you can about a company saving the world? It is this passion that makes fanboys go to efforts a bear never would. Then said fanboy conducts their own research and then shares it in the community for free and their payment is the appropriate kudos in the community and their credibility score will increase. 
validation of a fanboy until you get the ultimate kudos of Elon replying to your tweet. We have a shared vision. Tessa has shown us this path of how the future can be. I mean, maybe it's possible these people aren't that stupid. I mean, surely, how could they be? So maybe they're being funded by oil and legacy auto, perhaps? Just as an exercise to at least slow down Tessa if they can't finish them off, Tessa's managed to build the foundation of this future, despite gale force headwinds. We got through to the other side. Now we just need to build on this foundation. Ramp up, build up, scale up. Now we can feel the goals are nigh. Getting these new factories to volume production is going to be another huge milestone. The amount of profit these will bring in means Tessa can invest in anything. Yeah, Tessa still have a lot more to invest. Elon was asked about dividends in the shareholder meeting. They aren't happening for a while. Tessa has over $16 billion in cash right now. That is a lot of money. But if it's not dividends, then have a little thought as to what Tesla might be saving up for there. I hadn't been around the block when I was initially investing in Tesla, and I was watching Jim Chanos on CNBC. I was absorbing any information I could about Tesla back then. It was a lot more limited. But here we have these credible people talking on this alleged credible show, telling me that Tesla is going to zero. The big boys will come and take it from here. Tesla showed them it's possible and EVs can be cool, and that's all. How could they say such things? What information did they have that I didn't? But at the same time, there was some easy math to do. Tesla has great profit margins. Tesla has great demand. Tesla gets more range than any other EV in history by a long way. Tesla's family sedans get better performance than supercars that cost five times the price. This is a disruptive product. It was almost like affirmations I had to go through each day to keep that conviction. As a lot of you know, there were some tough times. During those times, I didn't consider selling, but I did tell myself I am glad I hadn't put everything I had in as at the same time, I'd lost about nearly half my investment. And well done to all of you holding through the dip we had this year to the 500s, especially those of you who bought in the 800s. I know how you felt, as this was similar to what happened to me. I think my average share price was about $320 at the time, and the stock price dropped to $180, of course, pre-split prices. And that's not to say a drop like that won't happen again or worse. That's investing. But it's just some arbitrary share price set by the market that has manic depression and a serious bipolar disorder. It wasn't like the revenue had dropped, or demand was dwindling, or production was slowing. The company looked good from that perspective. You know, once we got past that whole production hell business. But the crash I'm referring to was actually after that. I think it was the shorts firing everything they had left. The short position was higher than any other stock on the Nasdaq. We got through it. I just wish I had been executing my leap strategy as early as that. Could you imagine? No, can't think like that when investing. Be happy with what you got. Anyway, we did it. We knew better. We believed our conviction. We believed in our CEO. We believed in a better future. Thanks for listening. Please hit the thumbs up and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter and talk to me on Patreon.